Praise the Lord. If you are still awake, I said, Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. And thank you, Lord, for your power that you manifest according to your promise. I will pray, Lord, this time, as we hear your word, it will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, show us, reveal to us the things we have not known. And the things we have known we are forgetting. Reveal more to us in Jesus' name. And let the world bear fruit in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. We're talking about Jesus, Emmanuel, the Son of God, the Savior. The sanctifier, now we come to Emmanuel, Jesus, the healer. Emmanuel, Jesus, the healer. In Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. We're considering healing from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. We're considering healing in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And here we find Emmanuel, Jesus, healing. And it says the servant of the centurion was healed in the self same hour. That's the result of the contact of the centurion with Christ. The centurion came to Christ. The centurion was humble. Humble because he said, I am not worthy. That's part of the condition of the healing that God gives. And he said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He believed in the final authority, in the efficacy of the word of Christ, the healer that comes before the healing. Humility on the one hand, faith that asserts, affirms, confirms the authority of Christ, the healer. And the Lord said, be done unto me as thou hast believed. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Christ had perfect understanding he knew that some of the people that were brought to him the sicknesses were caused by evil spirit and he cast out the evil spirit others he healed that had no connection with evil spirit he cast out the spirit with his word there's no other means and there's no other weapon but the word of the Lord. And he healed all that were sick. Verse 17. In verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. 
the healing of the of the Lord comes as a result of fulfilling the prophecy. It's not in isolation. All that have been written about Christ, the prophecy, the prediction, the promise that this is what Christ will do. He does that not because of our feeling, not because of our passion. He heals, not because of, Lord, look at who I am. No, he heals because of the fulfillment of the prophecy that had been declared before him, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. We're looking at three things as we talk about Emmanuel, Christ, Jesus, the healer. Number one, the beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. In the Old Testament, before he arrived, before he came, there was healing. And as we go back to the Old Testament, from the beginning to the end, you'll find Jesus, before he came, had known that healing had been there done by the Father. The beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. Number two, the boundlessness of divine healing, definite healing, with Emmanuel's anointing. He came, and he came with anointing. He came with power, and the anointing upon him made him to heal everywhere, every form of sickness, and the healing, definite healing that he brought was boundless. Number three, the blessing of desired healing after Emmanuel's ascension, before his advent, before his arrival, healing. During his time here on earth with anointing, healing, after he went back to heaven, after his ascension, healing continued to take place because of the stripes of Christ the Lord. We're coming to number one. Number one, the beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, Old Testament, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. In verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In the Old Testament, they had benefits. Benefits from the Lord. Benefits from the grace of God. Benefits of forgiveness, benefits of salvation, benefits of holy heart, benefits of sanctification, the benefit of walking with the Lord, and the benefit of healing and deliverance. They added to in the Old Testament, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, great benefit, and who healeth all thy diseases. It wasn't just doctrine. It was the experience of having the forgiveness of sin and the healing of diseases. And you say, it says there, all thy diseases and actually in the old testament and in the new testament there is no differentiation or distinction that one is great 
that one is small that sickness has been there for a long time that sickness is old age sickness that sickness is a kind of hereditary sickness nothing like that all the diseases he healed them look at exodus chapter 15 verse 26 in exodus chapter 16 verse 26 and said a hey, thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and will do that which is right in his sight I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. The statutes. There are people who believe that you cannot keep all the commandments of the Lord. The people who believe that the child of God, the believer, is so weak. He cannot hear, he cannot do, he cannot observe, he cannot obey the commandment of God. They charge God as a taskmaster that demands from his children, from the believers, what he knows is impossible. Let all men be liars. Let those doubters be liars. God is true. If we want relationship with him, and if we want the benefit that he provides from him, he says he demands that we diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord our God, and that we do that which is right, in his sight and will give ear to the commandments of the Lord and keep and keep and keep all his statutes. Then it says, I will not put any of the diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He gives condition. He says, my power is not cheap. My healing is not cheap. And you don't pay with money. You come to him with a humble heart, a listening ear, and a, a life that wants to do the commandment of the Lord, which means then, my brother, my sister, let's see through. If somebody devotes his life to sinning, if somebody devotes his life to contradicting the law of God, the law that he has given, even for our flesh, even for our body, and he's misusing his flesh, misusing his body, and he's saying, uh, healing, healing is coming. No, we don't treat the scriptures aright. We must not give our flesh to sinfulness, to disobedience, to righteousness, and to the works of the flesh. We must not. We live according to his word. And then he says, if your life is different from the life of the Egyptians, I will put none of those diseases that are brought upon Egypt upon, I will not bring upon you because I am the Lord that healeth thee. We're looking at Exodus chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 25. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and ye shall serve the lord your god and you remember serving the lord your god depart ye depart ye from iniquity all that bear the vessels of the lord 
we serve the Lord in righteousness, in holiness, all the days of our life. If we come with the right mind, with the right attitude, and with a purge, purified heart, ye shall serve the Lord your God. If we have grace to serve God with reverence and godly fear, ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. From the midst of thee. What will that mean? Number one, look at all the children of Israel. From the midst of the children of Israel, anywhere they were, the Lord will take sickness away from them. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Take every individual. He says, He will take sickness from the midst of us. In the midst of us, you know, also, doesn't, it's not in the forehead, it's inside. Cancer is not on the forehead. You can take picture, nice picture, and people may not see the cancer. It's inside. And all those sicknesses that destroy, and also the sicknesses they called old age sicknesses, affecting the brain, affecting the mind, affecting the retina behind the eyes. They're not visible. And you cannot see, look at that, look at that, it's in the midst. And the promise of the Lord is, if you will serve the Lord your God, it shall bless thy bread. I didn't hear amen there. I don't want to go too much into the bread, the food, the food we eat. Sometimes it's not just what you are eating, what you are eating may eat you up. It will bless thy water, the importance of water in our system, so that we're well hydrated. And then it says it will take sickness away from the midst of thee. If you serve him, hear some people say, Pastor, you know what? I cannot serve the Lord now. I say, why? I'm sick. I'm troubled. I have this. I have this challenge. I will not serve the Lord now. I'm challenging the Lord. When the Lord heals me, after the Lord has healed me, I will serve him. He is challenging you. That you put him first. That you don't put yourself first. That first of all, you will serve the Lord your God. And you will seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. After that, all these things shall be added unto you. Serve the Lord your God and he will bless you. I said he will bless me. And take sickness away from the midst of thee. I'm serving the Lord. Let's just say for preaching, for illustration. I discover sickness in my body, in the midst of me, that others cannot see. But I know and feel and sense. What am I to do? Am I to give up service? Give up preaching? Keep up prayer? Give up counseling and say, <clears throat> Madam, you don't understand. You are coming for healing. You are coming for counseling. I have some challenges myself. And I've told the Lord, we made a deal that I will stop serving him. Let him heal me first. They say, but Pastor, you know the word of God. Tell me the word of God you think I know. It says, you will serve the Lord your God. Challenges, sickness, difficulty, sadness, unhappiness should not take away our commitment and consecration in serving the Lord because it is in that serving the Lord 
he will bless you. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. And he will take sickness away from the midst of thee in Jesus' name. We know from the word of God, the people that had served the Lord, and when sickness came upon them, they pleaded with God. Look at Second Kings chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 1. In 2 Kings chapter 20, reading from verse 1. And in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him. And said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. The people that will take that, the prophet said, I will die. And those who are giving prophecies, national. They spot you out and they say, I know you are deep alive and you may not believe this, you may not accept this, but I am a prophet of God. Have you read my prophecies in the newspapers? Have you read that every time I pronounce something, it comes to pass? Well, whether you accept or not, the Lord sent me to you and said, you will die. <laughs> what do you do after that? You know, we need to know our Bibles. We need to exalt what we read in the Bibles above the prophecy of any prophet that may come to us. In these days of frivolous text sending, I hope you understand you don't read every text you don't read every charge sometimes I get some text unreasonable text from people I don't even know I see the number this number is not among my regular contacts and I send in a text and they are saying, God told them to tell me, hold on, I'm your pastor. If you're a member of the church and the Lord wants to talk to me, he'll talk to me. It's not going to come through you. Do this and do that. I don't even know who they are. Normally, I delete texts and chats that I don't know the source they're coming from. I, I think people should have respect for everybody, respect for our environment. And just because you got somebody's telephone number from another person, doesn't mean that you misuse that and you're frivolous and you're sending this and that. But here is Isaiah. It was not even a careless, unknown man. He was the prophet of God. And he told Ezekiah, set your house in order because you will die and not live. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, Look at verse 3. I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember how, now how I have walked before thee. You must have a lie that God, that God is pleased with. You must have a lie that will merit if we say it that way. 
the goodness of the Lord and the healing power of the Lord. But if you're living carelessly and walking carelessly and, uh, you know, jumping here, jumping there, no time for God, no time for His Word, and no time for prayer. And when calamity now comes, God, where are you? And God replies and says, I'm here, but where are you? Where have you been? I've not heard your voice all these years. You're not praying. You're not reading my word. You're not living according to my word. I can't see the evidence of the sanctification that your pastor is talking about. Uh, it's because uh, naturally I am weak. Okay. You don't want to obey me. You want me to obey your prayer. Doesn't work that way. Ezekiah said, Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and uh, have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept. So look at verse 4. In verse 4, and it came to pass, for before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, verse 5, he said, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, God, what am I going to tell him? You sent me to tell him that he will die and he will not live. And everybody knows me that when I speak, it's done. It's confirmed. Now you are telling me to go back and reverse what I said already. I said was sanctified if he had to swallow his word he will if he had to reverse what he had said he will if he had to undo what he has done because now this is God he will are we like that are we like I say that You've been doing something. You even thought, here is what God told me to do. Here is what God sent me to say. If the Lord now says, because of the prayer of Ezekiah, the prayer of the leader of the king in the land, the prayer of somebody that came to have attention from God because of that prayer go back there and don't repeat what you said before reverse what you have said are we that holy are we that humble are we that submissive unto the Lord that we will do exactly what he has said? I keep on emphasizing this church is built on the demand of God for holiness. Holiness will make us humble. Holiness will not make us rigid. After hearing the word, after praying and praying and praying, after we pour our hearts out and say, This is the way, walk ye therein. And leaders, people, members, workers are so rigid that they will not listen to the word of God. And when sickness comes, they think healing. It's cheap. Healing is there all the time. Why don't you come back to the Lord? Let him heal the heart first. Let him heal that stony heart first. And let him do a deliverance work that he takes the stone out of the heart 
and now you can have an answer to the request of your life turn again and tell hezekiah the captain of my people thus says the lord the god of david thy father i have heard thy prayer amen i say did you pray for him no why not god told me he will die so he should set his house in order so why should i pray okay there are people that say where's the pastor where's our jesus where's my father my own father i am sick here and can i get to him why can i not see my father my sister my daughter don't die in that condition pray if you pray the lord will answer your prayer my brother don't die in that condition where is the pastor gone or here is gone to that place india to that place zambia is gone to that place cameroon is gone to togo i'm here at the headquarters and i'm sick here i'm lonely here i'm having a problem here and the pastor my father is globe trotting uh-huh if you're going like that you might choose an insultive word be careful pray if isaiah is not available to pray for you pray god will answer your prayer he says i have seen thy tears behold i will heal thee i love that say i love that you know god did not have to take permission from isaiah i told you to tell him he will die now i hope this does not offend you and it does not rob you in the wrong direction i want to heal him i say what do you think about that god never asks permission of anyone as a final authority he said you will die he changed his mind now he said you will not die he said you will leave how about what I said before? What you said before is not as important as the plan of God, as the program of God, as the project of God. I will heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and I will add unto thy days tell me tell me if you can tell shout it if you are sure you know that god still adds yes to our lives i said do you know that god still adds yes to our lives he adds years to life. Listen to this. He has, he adds life to years. Years to our life. That's chronological. That means he gives us more years. That means we can say another January to December, another January to December 15, he will add yet. There's another side. He adds life to our years. What does that mean? It gives you that long life. And he also gives you the health span. Health span. That's the span of your life. Life span is extended. And within that life span, he also gives you health span that you are healthy what's the point 
if he gave him another 15 years and the all and the 15 years will be full of ulcer and cancer and deafness and dimness of sight of same and um, you know uh, dementia what's the use no he has years to life he has life to our years he will do it for you in jesus name that makes us healthy that's divine health that's divine healing when you're sick he heals you that's divine health he preserves you from sickness he will do it we're looking at genesis chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 7 genesis chapter 20 verse 7 it says now therefore restore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt lay and if thou Restore her not, no, know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. That reemphasizes the understanding again. Sin brings sickness, sin brings disease. Abimelech the king had sent for Sarah and she had taken Sarah to, her, to his house and wanted Sarah to become one of his wives. That was against the plan of God, the project of God, what God wanted to do and the promise the Lord had given that Abraham will have a child I seek through Sarah and uh, you know the king a man of authority took that woman even though she was of age yet she was still presentable enough wanted her to be his wife and Abraham did not have any authority and now sickness came upon the whole family and God said this sickness will kill you and kill all the members of your family only one condition restore the man his wife and I tell you if that man said no I love the woman so much since she came I want pleasure from her I will not restore her but I will fast Fasting will not do it. I'll call for people who can pray. Prayer warriors. Prayer warriors will not do it. Only one condition. Repent of sin. Make restitution. Restore the man is what? You see the healing that God gives. And this is the first healing in the Old Testament. And this was the condition that God laid upon him. And there are people, they don't want to hear about repentance. Heal me, heal me, heal me. They don't want to hear about restitution. Heal me, heal me. They don't want to hear about restoration. What you have taken unlawfully, restore that. Otherwise, your prayers will not be effective. You'll be praying to seal heaven. In verse 14, verse 14 tells us, And Abimelech took sheep and all sin, and men servants and women servants, and gave them to Abraham. Abimelech, so far, so good. But you need to go further. You cannot try to misinterpret the command of God. Make that restitution. Right the wrong. Make your way right. 
and then you do other things you're very active in this and that your conscience is telling you so far so good but you have not done the right thing let that wife of another man go back to her husband that's what the lord requires that's what he demands he wants the man and his wife to live together until death do them part but now before death even comes you have taken her to be your wife maybe you have wives already like abimelech and you want to increase the number in your polygamy god says restore the man his wife and he will pray for you you know something god will answer when you do the right thing i can't hear you god will answer your prayer when you do the right thing let me give you an illustration somebody has done something wrong and he feels it somebody has done something wrong and he knows it and he's suspecting that i might have known that this is what he did he's feeling guilty he's feeling condemned is watching my attitude. The sin no, I see heard, I see detected that I am the one that did that thing. And then I'm not talking, um, you know, theory. I'm talking practical, real. It happens, and I can point you to one, two, three. That you know happens to and they come to me and he comes to me and he says pastor pray for me and i'm watching his face and even the plastic smile in his face you know is hiding something there no problem praying it will not take me a minute or two i'll pray but what do you think about that kind of prayer that's the, the evil thing he has done he, uh, he does not want to confess he does not want to change he does want not want to turn around you know that's 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 not biblical prayer another time i don't know whether they teach each other Go and do this. And they do that. And after doing that, I expect they will come. And they always come. They always come. And you say, Pastor, pray for me. And I can tell now, this is like one of them. They don't believe in the revelation of the scripture. They keep on doing evil. And they keep on saying, pray for me, pray for me. God does not answer that kind of prayer of a person that does evil deliberately, he does not have the courage, he does not have the mind, he does not have the humility to confess and to say, I am sorry, I will not allow that to continue. But you know, in the case of Abimelech, he restored him his wife he restored him his wife so that abimelech can have his wife 100 percent look at verse 17 in verse 17 so abraham prayed unto god and god healed abimelech and his wife and his maid servants and they bear children god will heal you the word of the lord will heal you your response to the word of god will heal you in jesus name we're coming now to point 
Number two. Point number two is the boundlessness of definite healing with Emmanuel's anointing. Emmanuel's anointing. We're looking at Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to search at liberty them that are bruised. In verse 19, and to preach, and to proclaim, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20. In verse 20, and he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Verse 21. In verse 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears the word of god will be fulfilled in your ears in your life in jesus name look at verse 32 in verse 32 it tells us luke chapter 4 verse 32 and they were astonished at his doctrine for his word was with power the word with power that's why he sent the word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction verse 36 in verse 36 and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Any unclean spirit, tormenting any life, they come out in Jesus' name. Verse 40, in verse 40, it tells us here now, when the sun was setting all they that had any sick or divers different diseases brought them unto him and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them and healed them and heals you and delivers you now understand Christ's healing sometimes he speaks the word is healing sometimes he laid hands on the people and they are healed he doesn't even do similar healing in similar ways two blind men came to him and then they said, Have mercy upon us, son of David. What do you want me to do? That our eyes may be opened. And then they said, Do you believe I can do this? They said, Yea, Lord. They said, Be it unto you according to your faith. They didn't even touch them. They didn't even do anything to them. And didn't even lay hands on them, and they were healed. Another time, a blind man was in the sight, in the presence of Christ. And the disciples asked, who sinned, 
the parents of this man or this man that was born blind disciples let's be reasonable after the man have seen before he was born and therefore blindness came on him you know when we disciples when we ask questions we should think through the question we're asking this man did he seen that this blindness came on him and he said neither the parents nor the man but that the glory of god may be revealed and then he looked at the man he didn't speak the word another method now he didn't lay hands on him another method now and he made clay and put on his eyes healing blindness in different ways by the same Christ so let's understand don't be wedded to a particular method this is what must happen if the preacher if the one praying for me if he does it this way according to my expectation then i believe uh -uh. different methods but the same name the name of christ he laid hands on him or he laid hands on every one of them and they were healed i pray the healing of the lord will be definite in every life in jesus name the lord went about you know the verse there's no harm in reading it again acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost Do you see there god the father is different from god the son and god the son is different from God the Holy Ghost that's the Trinity God anointed Jesus not anointing himself anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing how many people that's why I would say his healing was boundless. The boundlessness of definite healing by Emmanuel's anointing. And when you recognize that anointing, when you accept that anointing, and when you accept that Christ has all power, and has the needed anointing to take away your infirmity, your disease, your sickness, the recognition of the anointing, the belief, the faith in that anointing will set you free. It went about with that anointing. And Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday yesterday yes today this century and forever beyond our time as i went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil he's still doing the same today he goes about doing good it will do good in your life it will heal all that are oppressed of the devil. Understand? Not oppressed of God. If you are oppressed of God, Jesus cannot come and take that oppression away. That will be saying, Father, I don't agree with you. You shouldn't have put oppression and any kind of disease on this man. On this woman, I disagree with you. I'm going to undo what you have done. Never. The Father and the Son are always in agreement. 
my father walketh hitherto and i walk there's no disagreement there's no conflict between the father and the son what the father does he does in fact he said philip don't you believe that god the father is in me and i in the father and the works I do is not me, it's the Father that dwells in me that does it. I and my Father are one, healing all that are oppressed of the devil, not oppressed of God, for God was with him. And that anointing on Christ will bring a total healing in your life in Jesus name John chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 46 John chapter 4 reading from verse 46 so Jesus came again into the Cana of Galilee where he had made the water wine and there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. Verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him. That means the man, the ruler, went unto Christ. And besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. He was at the point of death. He might have said, No necessity of going to Christ because the son is already at the point of death in our day at our time the man will say the boy is already on oxygen and is gone into coma is gone into unconsciousness and the doctors are saying we cannot treat him anymore it's of no use and uh, you sign the paper will remove the oxygen but you know the man didn't accept that the boy the child was at the point of death and yet he came anytime you come emmanuel will answer you whatever the stage stage four stage whatever of that sickness Emmanuel has all the power he will heal you in Jesus name verse 48 in verse 48 then said Jesus unto him except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe Jesus said except you see signs and wonders, miracles and healings. Ye will not believe. You know, there are people that say healing not necessary anymore. Miracles not necessary anymore. If you have, you've gone to seminary, you have theology, you know the word and you know how to preach. That's all that is necessary now. All this healing, healing, signs, wonders, miracles, not necessary. And there are maybe people over here that might have that same concept. Pastor, teach the world. Pastor, be our teacher. Miracles, healing, they already have the hospitals they can go to leave all that alone 
the word. But Jesus said, there are people, there are tribes, there are nations, there are clusters of people, they have not believed, they have their religion, and except they see signs and wonders, ye, they will not believe. There are some believers in different places that may say there are false prophets, right? There are false miracle workers, right? And so, if we also come and will demonstrate healing, will the people not group us or the false prophets? No. If you don't have anything behind the curtain, you don't have any power apart from the power of the faith in Christ, they will see your transparency, except they see signs and wonders, they will not believe. Verse 49. In verse 49, and a noble man says unto him, Sir, come down here before my child die. Verse 50. In verse 50, Jesus says unto him, Go thy way. Are you not going to pray? Go thy way. Are you not to command? Go thy way. Are you not going to make a decree? Go thy way. Are you not, to, are you not going to follow me and go come touch my son? Go thy way. Whatever Jesus says will bring healing in your body. But you know, there are people, they glue to just one method. And this is a delicate situation, a terrible situation, a terminal situation. And because of that, they want to be in control of Christ, of his method. Go thy way, thy son liveth, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way go thy way thy son liveth and he went his way verse 51 in verse 51 and as he was now going down his servants met him and told him saying what did they say? What did they say? Exactly what Christ had said. A confirmation of the words of Christ. Confirmation will come in your life. Yeah. Thy son liveth. Verse 52. He says, Then inquired he of them, The hour when he began to amend. Now you see the man, the man expected, began to amend. Gradual. They said unto him yesterday, at the seventh hour, not began to amend, the fever left him. The fever has left you. The typhoid has left you. The malaria has left you. The feverishness has left you. The weakness has left you. If you believe that, it is done. Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Verse 53. So, the father knew that it was at the same hour, not beginning to amend instantaneous, at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, 
and his whole house remember except he sees signs and wonders you will not believe he has seen the sign he has seen the wonder he has seen the deliverance and the healing instantaneous on the sun and he believed healing brings more faith in the lord as savior verse 54 in a sorry verse 53 it says the whole house the whole family believed Christ still has power. The power of God, He wills. The power to forgive. The power to heal. The power to bruise your enemy. And the power to raise you to life when you're on your deathbed. They can raise you up again in Jesus' name. We come now to point number three in point number three the blessing of desired healing after emmanuel's ascension before emmanuel's arrival divine healing after he arrived in his lifetime with emmanuel's anointing we have Definite healing now. He went back to heaven. He ascended to heaven, leaving his disciples, leaving the apostles here behind. And after that ascension of Emmanuel, the desired healing continued. Will continue in your life, your family in our church in our church and not only being done by the GS by the convener of GCK that power you also will manifest in Jesus name Acts chapter 2 verse 33 in Acts Chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which he now see and hear. He's gone up to heaven, and healing continued. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the, tell me, tell me, the apostles in the plural, power, the same power in Peter. That same power in Philip, that same power in Stephen, that same power in all the other apostles, that's biblical. Our church will be like that. Power in your life. Power in your mouth. Power in your prayer. In Jesus' name. Acts chapter 3 verse 2. In Acts chapter 3 from verse 2. It says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, who seen Peter 
and John about to go into the temple asked an arms verse 4 in verse 4 and Peter fastening his eyes upon him what John said look on us they had something to give you will have something to give the Lord will give it to you it will work in your body then it will work in your family amen yeah. then it will work in your community and everywhere you go it will work in jesus name yeah. i have the power say it from your heart say it convincingly when you see somebody sick around you, the first thing is not, let's go to the pastor. You have the pastor there. The Lord will walk through you in Jesus' name. Look on us. Not just look on me. Look on us. The same power in Peter, that same power in John. The same power in William, that same power in what's your name? What's your name? Mention your name. That same power will walk in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And when I pray, you must expect to receive something of me. You will receive. You didn't come here in vain. And you will not return home in vain. You will receive in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, then Peter said, Silver. And gold have I none. But thank God today, the church, for serious now, cannot say silver and gold we have none. Look at all this offering we are collecting. This church has silver and gold. I learned of a preacher somewhere for having uh, their church service and he said now we're going to collect offering if you have 10,000 naira raise up your hand 20,000 raise up your hand 50,000 raise up your hand and they were faithful they raised up their hands 10,000 I can give 20,000 I can give 50,000 I can give They said okay Raise up your hand They raised up their hands They stood up They said Now that 10,000 That 20,000 That 50,000 Go and give to the poor In your community Ah I lost my audience praise the lord all the offering is not just church there are poor people around there are unemployed people around there are indigent people around but we must build our campground, DL, 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 ICC. I understand. We must build. We're going to build. But while you're building, your neighbors are dying. Your neighbors who do not have anything to feed themselves. And your fellow brother, your fellow sister has nothing to send children to school will build the LICC deeper life international 
conference center, but will not throw our hands up in the air. All the offering we can give, we have given to DLI CC building, and we can now be at ease and allow our members to die of hunger and to be so destroyed because they have nothing. And we have the money. And what he, this church, like we used to do in the olden days, good old days, that we reserve an amount of money aside for charity. That will say, as we're giving, we allocate this amount to the building of DLICC. We allocate this amount to building the district church. The district church we are building, are we not building for people? The people we are building for, they are dying of hunger, malnutrition, starvation. Let's budget. End of the year. We're coming to the new year. Let's budget part of the money. Millions. Millions. Of our currency. To take care of the people. In fact, which one comes first? Let's say your house is leaking. And you have your mother dying. How will you spend? Will you first mend the leaky roof or take care of your mother? Which one will you do first? We should give priority to members of our church. Even those who are not members. And we know them. And we can contact them. Silver and gold. Now we have silver and gold. <laughs> you know, and sometimes... Even myself, we travel around, and as we travel around, you know, some of the governors and some of the people, they appreciate what is happening. They say, Pastor, we know you always give everything to the church. This one, we're giving you directly. And so, I cannot say, honestly, silver and gold, I have none, I have some. And I'm not going to give everything to the building of DLICC. I'm looking for those who are hungry. I'm looking for those who are dying. I'm looking for those who are impoverished in their lives. And some of the money will go to them. If you know them, tell your coordinator. Tell your group pastor. Tell the people so that we will not be guilty of giving all the money to a building that will not be raptured when Christ comes. Christ is coming to rapture the church and to rapture the people. Take care of the people. Somebody shout, Amen! Silver and gold are by none, Peter said, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk. Look at verse 7 in verse 7 and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You receive strength in Jesus' name. In verse 8, verse 8 says, And he leaping stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping. I'm praising God. It will heal you. It will deliver you. 
it will set you free and what heaven has the healing the deliverance the miracle the signs the wonders you'll enjoy from today and for the rest of your life in jesus name mark chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 15 mark 16 verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature verse 16 he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe any believers here I said any believers here these signs will follow you because you believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 and if they drink they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them it shall not hurt you they shall lay their hands on the seed and they shall recover and i will recover verse 19 so then after the lord had spoken unto them after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god emmanuel's ascension verse 20 and in verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere preached everywhere in their own city preached everywhere in their own country preach everywhere and now in our continent and in all continents and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following say that again shout that again this power of the risen christ will walk through you as well let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer there's healing divine there's healing definite there's healing desired desirable for you for your family for your community for your church the local church for everyone the signs shall follow them that believe all you have to do is believe the power has not changed all power given unto Christ in heaven and on earth and if Christ resides abides in you he abides with you in that power he loves you you take care of your needs he heals and it he will heal you 
But after you are healed for strength, you need food. You need shelter. You need clothing. You need wherewithal. You take care of your life. And if you belong to the church, and you have leaders in the church, healing is not enough. Healing by prayer. But now, we need what to eat. If you are working, praise the Lord. If you are employed, praise the Lord. If you can fend for yourself, praise the Lord. But if you cannot provide for yourself out of no fault of yours, the church will belong to. After the Lord has miraculously healed us, the church should look at us and see what we can do so you remain alive and the church should not give any excuse for spent all the collection all the offering all the money on building the campground building the conference center we spent all the money building the local church building. The people who worship in that building, they also need care. Feed the poor. Clothe the naked. Care for the widows. Care for the fatherless. That's what the Lord has given us to do. I want you to balance up everything. And the Lord will help you. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. Say the Lord has answered my prayer. You will not die prematurely. You will live a healthy life. Long life. Mighty purpose for life. And any sickness that came, came to a wrong place. It was not looking for you. That sickness was blind and then came to your house. Sickness come out in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that your healing plan is for everyone, everyone in your church. Lord, stretch forth your hand. Heal your people in Jesus' name. Any form of sickness, long standing sickness, terminal sickness, at this time, at this hour, touch your people. Heal your people. Deliver your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray as you heal your people. And you make us and you keep us healthy. All the other things we need clothing, food, shelter, care, provide in Jesus' name. And use us. Lord, use me to provide for the needs of people around me in Jesus name this period was celebrating Jesus 
Emmanuel, the great giver. Lord, give us the nature of Christ. If we need to buy bags of beans, bags of rice, bags of gari, bags of potato, bags of tomato, bags of edible things. Help us, Lord, that to celebrate, celebrating Christ, will buy and then in our churches, distribution. Amen. Give a better amen. amen. Lord, take care of your people. Amen. Lord, let the church, this church, become balanced. Amen. That we are not only having money for building, we are having money for building lives Amen. building families Amen. building uh, the widows Amen. building the widows Amen. building the orphans Amen. and building uh, the people of god Amen. nobody shall have so much to eat that we're eating too much and the others have not a single meal for every day Lord, distribute the manna everywhere. Amen. And let the goodness of the Lord be available everywhere for everyone, even strangers. At this time of celebrating Christ, help us, Lord, to have such generosity that will touch the lives of strangers around us in Jesus name Amen. bless your people Amen. well so much will I have to give to other people Amen. healing yes for everyone Amen. health yes for everyone Amen. deliverance yes for everyone Amen. dominion yes for everyone Amen. happiness and joy and long life for everyone my brother for you my sister for you my boy my daughter there for you lord spread the happiness everywhere in jesus name we pray